I still hear Chet the Jet chants in the crowd. Entering the ring, fighting out of the red corner, weighing in at 137 pounds, fighting out of Bout Fight Club and trained by Colin Morgan. Let's hear it for Coral Cowan! So again, yeah, first female bout of the evening. Historically, female uh, boxers have uh, kind of been the story of Haymakers. Yeah. So. Uh, so much so they have a dedicated event in Boston. Yeah, the Bells of the Brawl event in Boston is an all-female event. Um, it never disappoints. And also, you know what's funny? For whatever reason, you do see male haymakers participants stick with the sport, and they do participate in it, and they do continue to compete, but at a much lower rate than the females. Or And, and when they do, they <laughs> tend, and again, not to paint with a broad brush, but they tend to have less long-term success. There's been some really, really tremendous... Um, accomplished boxers that have come out of the uh, the female Haymakers for Hope program. Yeah, Please welcome, fighting out of the blue corner, weighing in at 140 pounds, fighting out of Gotham Gym and trained by Brian Burns. Let's hear it for Emily Riccio! Like, I can't wrap my head around how every boxer here can have this that much many people. Support, it's crazy because I'm looking in the crowd and and like right here, this looks like Riccio's crowd, right? I mean, it has to be. They're going insane, right? Could they, could they just be that passionate about the corner there? And there's no way, dude, right? But it's it's wild to see how excited each of these broad pockets are for individual boxers. There, there's there's a lot of fans for every boxer in this house. So the official in the ring for us. Our seventh bout of the evening is brought to you by our bronze sponsors, your friends at Gotham Gym and Cowan. So the, the, the third person in the ring, uh, we paid our respects to uh, Big Yo Connor, a uh, tremendous, tremendous individual for the Metro LBC, the local boxing committee. Um, really was kind of the face of the organization. Uh, this is his, his wife uh, in the ring. Uh, right now. A storied referee in her own right because yep. she's she officiated a number of our bouts when we visited uh, New York in the past. Yep. Uh, fantastic referee. Fantastic referee. It looks like Gotham is taping the gloves. I think they're removing the tape. Aha, there you go. Um, yeah, you're not. You, you can't tape the outside of your gloves, period. So yeah. th there are some exceptions mm -hmm. every once in a while. So we talked about Masters Boxing, 16-ounce uh, gloves. Uh, you're, you're not going to often find red or blue Masters Boxing gloves, so sometimes they'll use uh, tape to indicate the corner, duct tape. Um, you, you cannot be wrapping the outside of your gloves. Uh, yeah. That's not something that happens to the amateur level. The pros, obviously. And do, I like when the referees call that stuff out. Yeah. And because then, you can't have any tape. So, you know, back 100 years ago, you used to be able to tape. A lot of people would tape their shoelaces. They'd razor their, their, uh, their tank tops. You can't have any tape all outside of your hand wraps anymore. It's, it's, a, it's a relatively old rule at this point. Yeah. Now, I know you said this earlier, but to me, these two appear to be identical in height. Now, it says 5'6 and 5'8, 
I don't know if they're both closer to 5'7". I mean, they, 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 they are genuinely look they're literally identical in height, yeah. like to the millimeter. I mean, they, they are absolutely the same height. And it, it's funny, when you watch these warm-up videos, it, it, it kind of – it definitely gives you some insight, but it also gives you kind of a false sense because some of these uh, boxers look like absolute murderers, shadow boxing or hitting the bag, and other ones look, you know, very robotic, right? And then when they're in there, it doesn't necessarily match. So, sometimes it does, clearly. Yep. Um, but other times you get someone that doesn't necessarily look the part um, end up being a, a machine. <coughs> So, Corolla came in, immediately took center, and is pressing the issue. Um, but Emily actually looks like the larger of the two. Her, her arms look longer, if, if nothing else. And she looks like she's built a little bit broader. Like she has like bigger shoulders. And she's good, finding a hold for that good right, right hand. Good right hand, yeah. <clears throat> so, both kind of snapping that jab, but, but neither one really getting their head off center. So, if they drive a little bit more, it's landed on the chin. Yeah, good boxing overall, though, certainly. Yeah, uh, nice, nice compose, no nervous energy. Nope, not just throwing wild. Uh, both trying to control the outside. Uh, it looks like Coral is a little bit more comfortable. You know, she's got a little bit lower lead left hand. Um, but Emily having some success putting that offense down the middle. Just, what right what I'm seeing is some comfort with distance, some comfort with throwing, but not a lot of deliberate defense. You know what I mean? A lot of head on center, so yeah, oh, great right hand stung. by Coral. Yep. It's being cautioned. You need to listen. They must have. They must have. This said, has to be an eight count, yep. right? Send her to a neutral corner. Yeah. Go to a neutral okay. corner. Yeah, yeah. Very uh, warranted. Stung. Very warranted eight count. Yeah. One of those right hands definitely clipped her. And she looks fine, but she definitely got her bell rung for a second. Yep. There. Very deliberate eight count, very long. Um, you know, I, I I wonder how she 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 might be a little more stung than uh, yeah. And Coral uh, smells blood. Yeah, I I think I think Coral definitely senses that. If so, you know what I like about Coral is if a, if a punch she's not uh, sometimes I yell at my boxers don't look for the perfect punch. Yeah, right. Sometimes get, you get to force some the issue. She's throwing nice, tight, crisp, straight punches, and if it's not necessarily there. She's still letting her hands So the on. one thing that I'm seeing, though, so Emily, Emily, l l when she throws her jab, yeah. Coral cannot land her right hand. She just, she lands, it's, it's bicep to bicep. If she either slipped to the outside, if Coral slipped to the outside, jabbed the body, or sat on that right hand, have, which I believe she'd have much more success. Maybe drive inside, throw an uppercut. But if you watch, when she throws her right hand, it almost universally catches the forearm or bicep of Emily, just by the way Emily kind of defends with her jab. My fear, if I'm in Emily's corner, is that if this were a male super heavyweight fight, right? She I can come back with one punch. It's it's not even that. It's that a matter that the the opposition tends to gas when they got throw. it. But like just looking at how Coral her output that round, she doesn't strike me as someone that's just going to fatigue. Yeah. And in fact, she looked just as fresh from the start of the round that she did the end of the round. And as much as Coral is, is, is just sniping off those ones and twos, she does have like a little bit of diversity in her offense. If you, you see some left that, hook, that, stuff, that right, also the right hand you, by Emily. On yep. the if you watch her right hand, it's very hard for her to get past. Emily almost universally extends. Great her. right hand by Emily and good left hook back by Coral. See how, see how she catches it on her arm almost yeah. every single time? She's got to sit Emily's on that. Landing Emily's right landing hands. like solid, yeah, solid punches. great right hands. Walked into a couple of her own. Now, this is I where think. Coral tends to flurry and have success. This time, Emily cannot allow her. She has to interrupt that offense, and she's doing as best a job as she can. But her, that right hand landed a number of times. If she can take center and let her own right hand go, she can have some success. She can't wait, though. As soon as she lets Coral, uh, a Coral set up, rather, um, she ends up, uh, a Coral, um, she ends up having too much success. She's too fit. Pace slowed a little bit. Emily's needs to be a little bit more offensive-minded. Yeah, I mean, like it's again, you get three rounds. Clear, clearly, you know, fighting from oh, behind here. Good, good right, right hand, hand. By Coral again. A good, a good left hand. Great left top. hand staggered her there. 
Yeah, see that that bladed left hand. If Coral just sat on some, go to the body. It's 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 there all day long. I like to see Emily have more faith in her right hand. You know, really just step in and let it go. Because every time she's landed it, and she's landed it a number of times, even once there in that exchange, uh, she she does get Coral's attention. Again, she has to she has to post make room with that lead left, and she has to throw a hard right hand if she's going to have any uh, chance of winning this fight. And Coral just making it difficult for her. She's just so fit and so ferocious. When, when she can sneak that right hand in, it lands clean and hard. Uh, I, think, I think it's a very two, clear two rounds to none. Uh, Coral Cohen, uh, Emily, game opponent. Um, I, I'd love to see some body work by either one of them, to be honest with you. Yeah, it could be a game changer, especially on those exchanges where they just kind of continue to throw those punches, throw those punches, throw those Change punches. Change levels. One twos, one twos, one twos, one twos. If they drop that level and, and open their hips a little bit, they might have some success to the body. Man. Yeah, what, I mean, what we're seeing here is, you know, I, 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 th I think it's a fitness discrepancy more than anything else. I think the boxing skills are fairly comparable. I just, I don't see, again, it's a lot of alternating lefts and rights to the head, head purely on center. Not getting her head off center, not changing levels, you know, not going to the body, not not really picking shots and deliberately trying to counter. Uh, I think what we're seeing here again is that I think I think Coral is is in better shape, and she can she can simply press for three straight rounds. We'll I see if we see a different story here. I do think Coral's defense is the hair more polished. Uh, Emily tends to push and reach really really bit. extend her arms. Yeah, I'm with you. Again, uh, more of the same. Lots of ch you know chaining lefts and rights. Great right hand by Emily there. I think she this is what Emily needs to do. She has to, she has to be front foot heavy. She has to move forward. She can't just box off her back foot. And again, aesthetically, she appears to be slightly larger. She has to press this. I think Coral's again, hurt. She I think is. Coral's hurt. This is the closest Emily's had to winning a round, and and she has to continue. To I think press Coral's this. She, in she tremendous, a, a tremendous great right trouble. Hand again. Emily needs to continue to throw that right hand. There, again, again. She has to continue to throw that right hand. Yes, again. Emily needs to get off the ropes, skirt to center, and then she needs to throw that right hand early. Yep, and oh, she, she did. caught her again. She needs to continue to, to extend with that left hand. This is the first time we've seen Coral notably backing up. Notably backing up. Emily needs to press the issue. She's undoubtedly down two rounds to none. Great and, right hand and, again. And she's, and, and she's also winning this round. Definitely winning this round. Now Coral's game, she's throwing, she's firing, and, and and she's got Emily in her back foot, but finally Emily is planting Plant. her feet and finding that right hand yep, back. She needs to lead with that too. She needs to continue to believe in her power. And by the way, her level of conditioning. So while Coral is fit as she is, she also exerted a tremendous amount of energy in those first two rounds. Emily's coming on like, a, like an absolute mad woman. While Coral's throwing back, this is the first time we've seen Emily really have success coming forward. Every time Emily threw that right hand, she landed it. And again, Coral, not to be outdone, is still fighting bell to bell. I think what you're going to see there is a clear unanimous, unanimous decision, decision for red. But it but was three rounds to two. Sorry, three <laughs> rounds to two. That was not my best work. I would say two of the three, or or as I should say, two rounds to one, I believe Coral took that fight. Yeah. Um, Emily really, really came out, made some, some great adjustments in that third round, landed that that right hand over and over and over again really, really got Coral's attention. Too little, too late in my opinion. Two rounds to none. Uh, I think you're going to see a unanimous decision in the right That's corner. exactly how you should finish, though. You know, she, she knew she had two in the bag. So she absolutely had to come out there and, and press the issue, and she did. Uh, great third round. So far, I feel like um, as competitive as the fights are, they've all been clear-cut winners. I mean, yeah. they've all been unanimous. You know, I thought that you know some of the fights were more competitive. Like uh, we, we mentioned, about five and six there, uh, Lewis and Zabetti, um, as well as Chet and David there earlier on the night. Um, great fight, great rally by Emily. I just don't think it was enough to take uh, take the judge's decision.
Crowd's still Boxing electric. Fans, put your Throwing hands it to the together, MC for our make official some decision. noise for the ladies. After three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for a unanimous decision, declaring your winner out of the red corner, Coral Cohen. Yeah, another unanimous decision. Uh, no surprises. Great bout, and, and and you have to give it up, family, for a fantastic late fight rally. Um, but Coral pressed the issue from bell to bell. Uh, great conditioning, uh, great heart, great determination. Excellent. No fight. doubt about it. 